everybody! I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is completely free to subscribe and all you gotta do is hit that big red subscribe button down below. In today's video, I'm gonna be using some really cool new tech wrap vinyl that they sent me and I'm super excited about it. They sent this really pretty purple and some other colors as well as this gorgeous, shimmery, glittery black nebula. Now you're going to see some struggles with this one because this vinyl is very textured and it's pretty thick. So we're going to be using some different cut settings on it as well as a different technique to apply it to our sign that we're going to make. It came out really cute, but I hope that you guys will see that not everything works out the way you hope it will. But this came out really, really, really cute and I love it. I think it's super fun, but we learned some things while doing this. Now this design is from Creative Fabrica and they are going to offer you guys a $1 membership for their all access for the first month and it's an awesome little deal that they're giving just to my subscribers. So I hope that you guys will check it out. All access is great with Creative Fabrica because you get all sorts of amazing designs. They have designs for every holiday, every occasion and so many great things. And with All Access, all of my exclusive classes are also included. So there's tons of stuff you can learn over on Creative Fabrica that are not on YouTube. So you want to be sure to check that out. You can cancel that subscription anytime, and it's only $19 a month after that first initial month for $1. But I would highly recommend checking it out. I'll put the link down in the video's description down below. So let's head over to Design Space. I'm going to show you how to size and everything for this. We're going to do a little bit of zhuzhing to the design as well, just to make that Halloween stand out a little bit more and make it a little bit more our own. Then I'm going to show you how to paint your wood and seal it. And then we're going to apply the vinyl, which like I said, was an adventure, but I hope you guys will join me for it. It's pretty funny watching me try this. And then we'll add the ribbon and everything, and then we'll have this really cute sign. So let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for I'm so excited to do this one because this design is super cute and it's going to look adorable on our wood round. Now, remember, you can sign up for an all-access membership for just a dollar for your first month using the link down below. I love my all-access subscription because I literally get everything on the site included. So it's great and it makes life so much easier, especially when I want to throw together like a quick design like this where I just want to do a fun little Halloween wood round and I don't want to have to spend a ton of time designing it this is a great way to do it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click download and it's going to open up a folder and ask me where I would like to save it so I'm going to save it into my desktop I'm going to go to my Cricut folder and then I have a folder that's all Halloween designs so I'm going to choose that and I'm just going to leave it named but I usually do just take out all the numbers those don't mean anything to me. Those are more for creative fabric of themselves to kind of keep track. So I just get rid of that and I click save. Now mine opens up my folder down here in my downloads tab. So I'm going to open my downloaded folder because I need to make sure that I extract my folder. So I'm going to click extract all and then click extract. It's very easy to extract and zip to folder. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the files that I'm not going to need because I don't need them to take up space on my computer. I'm only ever going to probably use the PNG file or the SVG, so I'm going to delete everything else. Now you'll notice that my SVGs show up as a Microsoft Edge document. That's because I've never chosen a default program to open my SVGs, but that is an SVG. So if your computer is showing that way, that's your SVG file. I'm going to close my extracted folder. I no longer need it. And we're going to head over to Design Space, and I'll show you how to upload this, and then we'll show you how to size it. Over here in Design Space, you're going to click Upload, and then you're going to click Upload Image and Browse. Now, you can either browse it like this and find your folder that you saved it in, or you can drag and drop, but for this one, we'll find the folder. So it's in my Halloween folder, and it was called Haunted House Halloween, and then I want to choose the SVG version because that's going to be broken down into the two separate parts that we want to use. So you're going to have the separate word and the separate house. So you can go ahead and click upload and we're going to just give it a second here and we're going to select this image and add it to our canvas. Now one thing with these files is they are usually broken down into a lot of pieces and that can be pretty annoying to deal with. 
So the first thing that I always do is I'm gonna ungroup my design. Then I'm gonna go and find the house first and just make sure it's one piece. And I'm gonna pull that house away from the words. Now this does have an outline of the letters. Now I wanna make sure that I don't move everything. So I'm gonna use the button on my keyboard just to show you. Do you see how this is just an outline of the letter? I don't want that or need it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hold uh, shift on my keyboard and I'm gonna grab all of the letter outlines and I'm just going to simply delete them because I don't wanna use them. There's no need for them. So we're just gonna click delete. Now, if you look, your house is gonna sit behind your word Halloween. Now, I kinda wanna change that a little bit just because I think I wanna make the house a little bit bigger. I want to do a little bit of an offset on the Halloween so you can kind of play with your design and change it up a little bit to make it more what you want it to look like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to actually weld the word Halloween. So I'm holding shift and selecting all of the letters and I'm just going to weld that. That's going to make it one piece so it's going to be a little bit easier to work with. You're not going to have so many letters to deal with and we're not going to change this in any way. So I'm not really worried about it, but I do want my house to be bigger because I want it to take up a little bit more space behind the word Halloween. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna kind of position my house about where I think I want it to be in the word. I think that looks pretty good. You can tell that it's a haunted house. I like the way the Halloween sits on it. So I think that's good. The next thing I wanna do just to change up my design a little bit to make it a little more me is I'm gonna add an offset. So I wanna offset the word Halloween, but I want a pretty small one. So what you'll do is select your word, click offset. Now this does take a minute to load sometimes, so if it's a little bit slow for you, just give it a second. But like I said, I didn't want a really big offset, so let's try like a .05 and just see about how big that looks. I think that looks like a really good size. I just wanna be able to not have the words kinda of laying on top of our house. I want them to stand out a little bit. So I'm gonna click apply. Now you'll see that your offset is black and that's okay because we're gonna slice the offset from the house. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna select my offset and I wanna select my haunted house. Now you can only select two layers when you are slicing. So be sure to keep that in mind when you do this. You can always, like I said, play with this, figure out the way you want it to look. If you want the offset the way it is, you could actually weld it to the house and then you only have to lay your Halloween on top, but do whatever you want. Honestly, make these your own, have fun with it. But I wanna slice my offset out and let's see how it looks. Maybe we won't like it, maybe we will. So I've selected those and I clicked slice. You're gonna see you have a few pieces here that we're gonna need to get rid of. And I'm just gonna move the house out of the way and you'll see you have a lot of pieces. Um, delete all these weirdly shaped pieces and this is what we're left with. And this is where our Halloween word is going to sit inside of our house. Now again, you can do however you want if you don't like it set up that way. It's really up to you. You could add a different color offset if you want to. So let's go back and just play with the offset for a second and just see what we think. I'm just gonna hit back a couple of times until I'm just left back with the offset that we had. Now let's say we just, we like the offset, but maybe we wanna do a different color. We can absolutely play with that and make a fun color. You don't have to slice it out of your house or anything, you can just leave it and layer it. So it's really up to you and the way that you really wanna do it, there's no wrong way to make these designs. You can do whatever you want and however you want. Now I personally kind of liked it sliced out, so I'm gonna just go ahead and continue with the slice but I just wanted to show you an option if you wanted to do it that way. There's no wrong way to design your own thing. So I'm gonna move the house out of the way. Now you'll notice that the Halloween changed color to change to the background it looked like, and that's just where it's sliced. So you can just kind of get rid of all of that again. And then this is what our design is gonna look like. I really like it with the little white offset. I just think it looks really nice. Now we're gonna use a wood round that I got from Hobby Lobby for this. And we're gonna use tech wrap vinyl in some of their new colors. We're gonna use like a shimmer black and then this really pretty purple. But we need to make a like template for our wood round so that we can make sure we size this correctly. So I'm gonna be using a 14 inch wood round. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna open up my shapes 
and I'm just going to use a circle. You can do this without having design space because you don't need these shapes. It's completely included with your design space. Now, like I said, I'm using a 14 inch circle, so I'm just going to change my circle size to 14 inches. Now, there's a couple ways we can do this. Let me zoom out just so we can see the whole circle on our design here. You can either leave the circle like this and put your design on top of it, or if you prefer, you can change it to a guide, which basically means it's just going to give you an edge to look at, and you're going to be able to not have to like delete this. It will never cut this. It just knows that this exists. So what I'm going to do is select my Halloween and my little um, design here, and I'm just going to kind of put it into the circle, and then all I want to do is figure out about how big I want it to be within my circle space. I don't want it to take up the whole circle, but I also don't want it to look kind of off. And honestly, I almost feel like it needs like a little bat right here or something. I just feel like it's kind of off centered a little bit from the circle just because of the way the house is shifted and the word. So maybe we could add something right here you could always leave it too. You don't have to. It just feels a little unbalanced. So what we can do is head over back to Create a Fabrica and let's, let's look for a little bat that we could put there. So what's great is I can just search the word bat and it's going to bring up a ton of options for me to look at and to choose from. You can see you have all sorts of styles and designs and if you have the all access, all of your bat types, like anything that you search, is included. Now, I kind of like this one or this one, but I think this one's a little more the vibe that I'm going for. So I'm going to select this bat, and all I have to do is download it. I don't have to pay for anything because I already have all access, and I think this bat is perfect for what I wanted to do. So I'm just going to download him. I'm just going to save him as Bat Silhouette in my Halloween folder and click Save. Just going to go ahead and extract him, and we're just going to extract all again, extract, and then for me personally, I don't need the EPS file for this because I don't use Silhouette Studio and I actually have Business Edition, so I can use SVGs with it. But I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And then what we'll do is head back to Design Space and upload them. Over in Design Space, you just have to simply do just like you did with your little Halloween house. Click Upload Image, Browse, and find that bat. So we save them as Bat Silhouette. Choose the SVG file. Click Upload. Click on him and add him to the canvas. See, this is so easy, right? I told you guys, this was super simple and using Creative Fabrica makes it so much easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and size my little bat down a little bit and I'm gonna zoom back out again and just sort of figure out like how I want him to sit because I want him to take up a little bit of the space over here and maybe we add a few more of him. I'm not sure, but we'll play with it and see kind of what we think and whether we want to turn him a little bit. I kind of like him straight on for this part. And like I said, we can always add some additional bats if we want to. So I'm just going to duplicate him and let's play around and let's just add a few little new friends. What do you think? So we'll just sort of size him down a little bit over here. I think we add some bats. I think it'll be really cute. Just a little extra touch of that little spooky Halloween. So I'm just going to kind of turn some of them, size them down a little bit, play with them and see what I like. I think really three bats looks pretty good. Now, what I want to do, because I like where they're laying and I don't want them to move, is I'm going to select all of my bats and I'm going to select my house and just make sure that everything still fits within the cut size, which it doesn't quite. It's a little bit too wide. So you have a couple of options to how you can do this. We can just cut the bats individually and save some vinyl and then just try to lay them about where they are here. Or you could attach it and size it down. I think I'm just going to leave the bats alone and not actually attach them so that I'm not wasting vinyl and I don't need to size down my house at all. And I think that's the way I want to do it. Now we're ready to cut this out. And this is a super fun product that we're using from TechWrap. It's their brand new vinyl and I'm obsessed. I love it. I'm so excited to see how this looks. We're going to paint our wood round white just so that it stands out a little bit more against the wood. And we're going to be using some StarCraft chalk and mineral paint. So it's going to be a really fun project. Now what we're going to do is click make it and I'm going to show you that the circle does not cut and I'm going to show you we have our little bats. Now we might be able to squeeze those in onto the other page. So let's take a look. What you'll see here is we've got three little bats up here, but we can definitely fit them 
all around the house to save some vinyl. So we're gonna do that and I'm gonna show you how. Go back to the mat with your bats. Do you see these three dots up here in this upper left hand corner? If you click on those, you can click move object and you can select the mat that your house is on and click confirm. And you'll see now that it put our bat right there. He fits perfectly, it's not worth wasting the vinyl. So we'll do the same thing for these other two bats. I'm just gonna click move object, select the house and click confirm. And then we'll do the same thing for the last bat. And we're gonna click move object, select that mat, click confirm. And we just wanna make sure that those bats aren't running into the house anywhere, they're not. So they're perfect right where they are. But if they weren't, you could move them on the mat here, just grab one and kind of pull it around to where you want it to be. It's really up to you and how you wanna cut them. So don't worry, like if you want them at the top, it's fine. If you maybe wanna put them over here, totally fine, you can do that. And then here is our word Halloween ready to go. Now we're using a permanent vinyl, so we don't mirror this. Everything stays just the way that it is. So let's head over to the machine. I'm gonna show you the two vinyls that we're gonna use. We're gonna get ready to cut them out. I'm excited to put this project all together. We're ready to cut. This is the vinyl that we're gonna use. It's gorgeous so pretty this is a new tech wrap and it is like a glittery they call it like nebula black and it's beautiful so we're going to use this to cut now i did some test cuts on this and this particular vinyl cut best on the chalkboard vinyl setting so that's something you'll want to do is some test cuts and i'll link a video down below where i talk about test cutting and how i do it and then I've got some reels that are up on my Instagram and my TikTok that talk a little bit more about the particular test cutting I did on this vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this. I've already got it set up to cut over at the Cricut in the computer. So now all we have to do is hit the little go button. This is gonna cut out the bats and the house and then we're gonna use this pretty purple to cut out the word Halloween. Now that this one is done, we're gonna unload. Now I'm gonna be 100% honest, this is extraordinarily hard to see to weed. When I was doing the test cuts, I had a really hard time. So I recommend weeding it at like an angle like this, which sounds crazy, but I can see the lines if I turn it almost completely like straight flat. And you know, normally I say overhead lights are great for weeding, they are not great for weeding this particular um, vinyl. So before I take it off the mat, because I can see the cut line, I am going to trim this off so that I don't accidentally trim on the cut. Now I will say this is a really thick vinyl between the vinyl itself, which is super thick, the backing is also very thick. So you'll wanna keep that in mind when you are getting ready to cut this. It is not a really thin product. It's gorgeous though. I mean, you can look at that. Can you guys see like the cool color shift in that? Super fun. So what I do is like anything else, I always flip my mat over and remove my vinyl from my mat. And you can see this is really shiny backing. It's almost plastic, so it's very, very thick. The next one that we're gonna do is this purple, and I did a test cut on it. This one cuts beautifully on the vinyl setting, and I just trimmed off an edge because this one has a protective coating on it. So when you get this, you'll notice that it feels like, it looks like a much lighter purple. This is actually a little bit darker purple than you would think, and you wanna make sure that you remove that covering from the vinyl. So I'm gonna go put this on the vinyl setting, and we'll get ready to cut this one.
to use the chalk and mineral paint from Starcraft in the color white on this board. Now this is a pretty light colored wood, but I really like to paint them just so they look a little more finished. And I really like the bright white look. So I do have some silicone mats down on my uh, table. I just don't want to get any chalk paint on my table. I'm a messy painter and I've never used the white yet. So it's brand new. So we're going to need to take the lid off, which again is something I always make a mess when I do. So I'm going to do it right on top of the wood and I'm not always like the cleanest crafter. So if you're like me, do it on top of the wood. And like, I just splattered paint a little bit, but it's not too bad. Um, so I'm just going to take the lid and kind of like wipe it off on to the board just so that when I throw it away, there's not a ton of a wasted paint and then b paint that's going to get all over my like trash can and stuff. And you can just take your brush and just kind of spread out the paint that you put down just so that it's not, you know, all globby. I'm just using a cheap sponge brush that I got from the Dollar Tree and a big pack of sponge brushes. And I don't do anything like special when I paint. I usually just kind of put the paint on the wood. Now we are going to seal the paint to the wood. It's really important that you put a sealant over your paint before you apply vinyl to it. And especially since I think we're going to need to use a little bit stickier of a transfer tape for the um, thick vinyl we're gonna make sure that we do seal our paint. Now this is probably something I'm gonna do two coats on just so I make sure I get a really nice white surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this painted. We'll let this dry and it shouldn't take very long to dry. They, this chalk and mineral paint dries really, really fast. We'll put a second coat on and then I'm gonna let it dry overnight before I put that polycrylic coat on just because I wanna make sure that that paint is really, really sealed. And then we'll wait another 24 hours and then we can put on our vinyl. I always wait 24 hours for placing vinyl after sealing because it can cause some issues if you don't. You wanna make sure that sealant is fully cured and dry. So let's go ahead and finish this painting. I'll put that second coat on and then I'm gonna show you guys how we seal and then we can apply our design. So our next step for our wood round is to seal the paint, which I'm just using polycrylic. I just have it in this little squeeze bottle. It's just easier than having to constantly open my big jar. And what's great is you can kind of just take your squeeze bottle and just run kind of a, just a random glob around your sign. And then you can just make sure that you spread it out all over your wood. You don't need a real thick coat of this. I do recommend a pretty thin coat and you just give it a little zhuzh all the way around. And like I said, a really thin coat will do you. You don't gotta go crazy with it. You can always add a little bit more if you need to in a spot or two. And this part goes real quick because you just need to give it a good, just a coat. Now mine is a gloss, but you can use whatever finish that you want to for yours if you don't prefer gloss. They come in satin and matte. So you have lots of options. And like I said, I'm really just doing a very thin coat of this. It doesn't require like a real thick coat and it dries pretty quickly, but I am gonna give this a full 24 hours to dry so that we have enough time to make sure that it's really, really dry, really, really sealed on there. Now I do have a little bit of dog hair on it. So I am gonna go through and kind of pick some of that off. I'm pretty sure there was some fur on the brush when I was using it. No big deal, easy enough to get off. So we'll let this dry now. And it, you can already see it's already drying in some spots, but I think I'm gonna add just a little bit. I can see kind of a spot that either I missed or it dried really fast, but we're just gonna give it another quick little coat just to kind of make sure that everything is covered, especially where the vinyl is going to go. All right, now that that's done, I'm gonna let this dry and then we can apply the vinyl. We're gonna start with the haunted house, but the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna cut the little bats off just so they're not over in this corner because we want to keep those and put those on separately. Now I did do a little bit of testing with some different transfer tape and I got to tell you, I don't think I have anything super sticky. So, so I'm going to try it with this medium tack. This is going to probably be a bit of a struggle. I would recommend using a strong grip transfer tape for this. And what was sent with this was not strong grip. And I think this will grip a little bit better. It's just a little stickier. So I'm going to pull it out. And I'm gonna get a big piece, big enough for the house, that looks good. And just like I do on all my other projects, I'm gonna lay it face down onto the transfer tape. 
And then I'm just gonna kind of press it down. Then I wanna take my squeegee, and for this one, I definitely wanna make sure I'm giving it a really good burnish. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off real quick. So we don't really need it attached to the roll anymore. And like I said, this is pretty thick vinyl and it's very textured. So that is why using a better, stickier, tackier transfer tape is recommended on this. And like I said, I don't think I have anything. So we're gonna try and we may struggle a little, but I feel like sometimes the struggle can help you guys learn. Helps me learn too. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gently roll back my backing and see if it even stuck at all. I can tell you right now it didn't. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually help it stick by rolling it back. And you can see that really it's not sticking at all. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take it and flip it back over. And I'm gonna burnish it from the front this time. And like I said, I don't know if this is going to work or if we're just gonna ride the struggle bus for this whole design, but we're gonna try and just see if we can in fact get it to stick. Now you'll see, look, I can pull this off with nothing sticking to it. So let's try a different tape. I'm pretty sure they're basically the same stick to them but let's try the other transfer tape and we'll just see if by some chance this one will work as well. I don't know that it will because it really actually feels like slightly less sticky. One is StarCraft and this one is the Style Tech. So we'll just see what happens. I mean, worst thing that happens is it doesn't work and we just struggle to get it to stick, but we'll make it work because you don't need to go out and spend a fortune and go buy special tape we can make it work, it just might take us a minute. So again, we're gonna lay this down onto the tape. I'm gonna burnish it. And I'm using quite a bit of pressure to burnish this down. So I'm pressing pretty hard. All right. I burnished it pretty good. I have a feeling it's still just gonna do the same thing where it's gonna wanna stay stuck on its backing. Can you see that? It's not staying. So what we'll do, let's try rolling it off again and just see if maybe it'll stay down a little bit better than it stayed down on the other one. But I can tell you right now, it's really not. But what we can do is if we can even just get it to mostly stay on to the transfer tape, which it's mostly staying better than it was on the previous tape so i'm gonna keep going with this one but like the second like can you see it's like not even stuck down um this is gonna be an adventure we're gonna make it work we have a couple options of how we can do this and make this work and let's let's try one of them we are gonna try something that might work might not so what i want to do is i want this obviously to stick on to my wood piece here. So I'm partially wondering if we could somewhat do the hinge method with it, but I'm a little bit concerned that it won't stay. So let's tell you, told you this video is going to be a bit of a struggle watch, but we're going to get it. And don't worry, like I want you guys to see a struggle project as much as I want you to see when I get a project that does really well and stays down because I think you can learn from struggling just as much as you can learn from like when a project that I do comes out perfect. So I would definitely recommend a stronger grip transfer tape because you can see this whole house is just lifting up. And like if I try to touch it and hold it down, it's just coming up with my finger. So that's not really helping. So now what I'm kind of thinking is, okay, we got it this far. So what if we fold this down? Will this work? I don't know. Am I gonna mess this up? It's a distinct possibility. But like you can see, the house is holding itself together. So here's what I'm thinking. We get it all lined up, right? Get it all lined up where we want it, on our wood, okay? Then what we do is we press this part down onto the wood, and I'm gonna squeegee it down. So we're gonna use our squeege. And then what I'm thinking we do is just get rid of the transfer tape completely. 
It's useless. It's not really doing us any good. Now where we're probably going to struggle are these little small pieces, but this is what I'm kind of envisioning. What if we kind of roll this down off of the vinyl and we're sort of doing like a reverse transfer taping. We're just going to try to make it work best we can with the tools of which we have. So I'm just rolling this down and as it's kind of coming off of our tape, or our backing, we're just laying it down. Now again, is this gonna come out perfect? I doubt it, because we are struggling and this piece doesn't wanna come off at all, but we're gonna just try, we're gonna try. Because here's the thing, if you don't try and it doesn't work or it works and you didn't try it, well, you know, now you're just stuck with a project that you didn't get to finish because you were too afraid to mess it up. Well, guess what? We're going to go for it, and if it gets messed up, well, that's just what we're dealing with. Now, this piece I'm going to leave on there because it doesn't want to come off, and I'm just going to leave it because I can come back and put it back on after we lay down this part. So we'll do that with some of the parts that maybe like don't want to come off. So if there's a part that's just refusing to come off, we can come back to it because we can line it up using the rest of the, when we put the Halloween down, so you can kind of see here, like this piece on the house is being a little bit of a pain. And I've got a little center piece right there. We've got a little wrinkle, but we can press that out. A little wrinkle there, press that out. So now what I want to do is I want to try to make sure that this part of the house comes off. And we've got part of it already started here. So now we'll just have to kind of roll it down as we go. Like I said, this is going to be an interesting way to do this, but... Sometimes I think by trying some of these techniques that maybe we used like with a different product, we can learn from them. So I'm just rolling this off real careful. And I know that this part didn't start very well. So I want to kind of come up and get it started. And I kind of want to peel like this stuff up a little bit. And I just want to kind of make sure that all these parts that are right here kind of are peeled back. Because I'm learning as I'm going. I'm realizing if I peel back those parts, off of the backing, it's easier for them to get started onto the wood. Now I'm gonna turn this just because it's gonna be a little easier, I think for me to get the creases out of this, and I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just, there's a couple of little creases right here, and it's just from the way I stuck it down, but I think that I'm gonna be able to come back in and like redo it. So like I said, this is gonna be a little bit of a playing around, seeing what works, seeing what didn't work, yeah, there's just a little bit of a crease right here. Oh, there, it's gone already. That was easy. So you just need to start your parts. Like this little part didn't want to start. So we're going to get him started. And then I'm going to need to kind of pull this part back again. And I know that these little guys are wanting to be a pain. Guys, this, like I said, struggle. Struggle. We are struggling together. But it's because we don't have a heavy enough grip of a transfer tape and you know sometimes you just got to commit to trying it and seeing what happens so I'm going to probably need to move this guy because I just stuck him down to keep him off of the um, tape the backing and then I just want to get this guy going and like I said we may need to come in and fix some wrinklies and a little creases but we can do that because it really doesn't stick very well so I'm just going to kind of pop the bottom off all right, so we do have a little bit of a wrinkle and a crease over here. So what I'm gonna do is just peel that back up a little bit. And I'll know I need to fix the door because the door came off at a weird angle. But look at, I mean, it's sticking, but it's not sticking real well. So that being the case, and I know it's just the vinyl, it's not actually like the wood. Um, it's just the vinyl, because I guarantee you when we come in with the regular vinyl, we won't have an issue. Um, it's just because this is a really tough, thick vinyl to work with. It's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning, but oh boy, she's an adventure to work with. So we're just going to kind of do our best here. We're just going to do what we can. I think it worked. I think it's just kind of a pain the way we had to do it. I think it worked out okay. And I think we'll get everything down the way we want it to be. We just need to do some adjusting, which is okay, because it'll stick. It's still really sticky, like even though I'm peeling it up, 
It's super sticky. I just need to get this crease out and then there's a crease in the door because the door laid down a little funny. I'll just press that out. And as you can see, I'm able to press those creases out. So I just need to get this window up better because he's got a crease. Yeah. All right. Okay. So listen, was it easiest thing ever? <laughs> no. But did it work? Yes. And it looks pretty good. Like it really does. Now, like I said, we've got some extra pieces. We'll lay these down once we put the words on because it'll be easy to like place the words. And then we have our little bats, which we'll do last. And I'm not even going to bother with transfer tape with those. But I know that this is just like their regular vinyl. So transfer tape with this is super simple. And we're definitely going to use some. And we're going to be real careful because I'm afraid that if we um, accidentally touch some of this, it might come up. And I just want to make sure I'm being extra gentle. I do have a little crease right here that I got to press out. There we go. Okay. I think it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to grab the transfer tape that we tried to use originally and I'm just going to put it on here and then I'm going to cut it down a little bit because we don't need this huge piece. And like I said, I want to try not to put it on too much of the house. So I do want to cut it pretty close to the word and then I'll just set this extra over to the side. Now with this one, like I said, this is just their regular vinyl. It's just a new color from them from Tech Wrap. So it should go down no problem. And I think had I used just like a regular plain vinyl, this would not have been quite the struggle that it just was, but I'm super excited. Like I love this color. So I think I'll order some stronger grip transfer tape to use with that. Now what we wanna do is lay this down and get it lined up with our Halloween offset on our house. So you just sort of play with it, figure out where it goes, figure out where it sits. That looks like it's right. All right, so now I'm gonna burnish this down. All right, that looks pretty good. So then I'm gonna peel this back and it doesn't, wood is a little bit tough. So sometimes it does take a minute just to kind of get stuff started and sticking but you just sort of peel back your vinyl or your transfer tape. And I just like to kind of give my vinyl a little extra love. I like to hold it down a little bit. I like to just make sure, and with these sharp corners, sometimes it can be a little harder to get stuff to stick because those little sharp corners don't love sticking to things. But you're just gonna kind of work your way. And there's like a little technique you can do where you kind of wiggle it. You can kind of see how I'm wiggling it back and forth. You can kind of do that. But you just want to watch on all of the corners of your letters because those are where it really wants to lift up. And then I just put my finger on it and hold it down. And we'll go back over this with the squeegee once we've gotten all of the transfer tape off. So let me go ahead and finish these letters really quick and then we'll put the bats on. That looks so cute. I love it but we do still have these little extra pieces that we need to put on. These were just those leftover bits from where we put the design. So we kind of know where they go, so it should be pretty easy. Like this is obviously the E. So you can just use your hands. You don't need to use transfer tape because obviously it doesn't stick. This was the inside of the O because this made part of that window. And then this one is, I believe, this little part of the A maybe? Remember where that one went? Eh, good enough. And then this here is like the part of the like edge of the house. So there's that. There we go. There's like one little sliver left, but I'm not worried about it. And then we can place our bats. Like I said, I'm not even gonna use transfer tape because oh, what a waste of my precious time that was. So we're just gonna lay our bats out and I kind of remember where I put them. So we're just gonna kind of stick them down. Now this is something that you're going to want to give some time to cure on here to allow that vinyl to really adhere. But look how pretty that is. That color shift is stunning. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to attach a bow to the back and get everything ready to hang. So now that everything's on, we can put our ribbon on and let me tell you the Dollar Tree, excellent place to find ribbon. I got this glitter ribbon and then look at these two cute little bows with bats and I think it's going to match so cute with this. So the first thing that we'll do is get our ribbon open. And this is a really pretty glitter ribbon. I've actually used the Christmas one of this before and it's so cute. So what I'm gonna do first is kind of get an idea of about 
how long I want this to be. And I'm gonna take one of the bows off of the packaging. I love that I got two bows for a buck. Like I can't beat that. Now granted they're $1.25 now, but I still think that's a really good deal. So I don't want the bow to sit like on top of it like this, cause I don't want it to block. So I want it to sit up a little bit and then I just want to kind of see where the ribbon needs to be. That looks like a pretty good length. I want enough that I can have some at the bottom. So I'm just going to cut that off. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that my ribbon is going to sit correctly so that the glitter side is out. Now you have options for how you want to put your ribbon on the back. You could either put it like this where it kind of crisscrosses over itself or you could have it more like this where it's on opposite sides. I personally like to do it this way because it gives a little more stability. So what I like to do is I'm going to lay my ribbon down like this so that I can see where I'm going to place it because I want this to be straight. I'm going to come in with my little hot melt glue. I love this little glue gun. It's the best. It was like 20 bucks from Amazon and it's a cordless glue gun so I can go gluing all the things all the places. So now that I've got the hot glue on there, all I'm going to do is just take this and lay it right on top, press it down, and we'll let it dry. I want to make sure it can get on the table. It's good. It's on the table. I'm going to let that dry for just a couple of moments and then we can flip it over and we can reinforce, but I like to give it just a minute to make sure that it stays on there. Looks good. And then I'll usually take and just do a little bit more glue like down here, mostly just in case it wants to fray. This ribbon doesn't tend to fray, but it gives it a little bit more stability when it's coming to holding on. And then I'll usually do like a bead back here as well. This again just sort of gives it a little more hold when it's on to your wood. So I just like to make sure kind of give it a little like edge of glue just to hold it on and make sure it's good to go. Now we're going to let that sit and dry. Turn off your glue gun. We don't need it anymore and you want to make sure you turn it off for safety reasons. Let this dry up a bit and then we will put our bow on to our ribbon which is super easy because they already give you a little tie. So once I've let that glue dry, it's fully dry, flip it all on back over and I'm going to turn it just so I can get to the ribbon a little easier because it's a little tough to reach. And do you see this little, they give you a little twist tie. You don't have to use that, but I'm going to use it because it's in there. And first thing I'm going to do is I just want to twist tie it just a little bit right here just so that it will hold on to the ribbon. And then all I'm going to do is find the center of this ribbon and I'm just going to twist tie it onto that because I don't feel like I need to be like all crazy and get it permanently on there. I can take it off if I don't like it. And then when you hang it, this will hang kind of in front of this ribbon. It doesn't really want to right now, but now you'll have this cute little ribbon at the top for when you hang it. Now you can always make it shorter if you want to. You can kind of take this part and pull it up through the ribbon, whatever you want to do, but I'll get this hung up so that you guys can see how cute it looks all finished. Here is the finished door hanger. You can hang this in your house as well. I just decided to hang it like a wreath on my door. It came out so good. And don't forget that you can get this design from Creative Fabrica and sign up for that $1 membership for your first month for all access and that you can grab this tech wrap vinyl and save 10% using code Corinne 10. I think this is so stinking cute. I'm so happy with how it turned out, even with all the struggles. And I hope you guys learned some tips and tricks from watching me struggle with this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And as always, happy crafting.